Hey everyone, Shabim here and welcome back to the next part of NXT Shabby Takeover here in Philadelphia. Big one in this one, we've got Finn Balor versus The Undertaker. We have got Sami Zayn versus Keith Lee for the North American Championship. But first, we have got a massive six-man tag. And here is that six man, but it is going to be an elimination tables match as the undisputed here is Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong take on British Strong Style, Tyler Bate, Pete Dunne and Trent Seven. I tell you what, this game really hates Roderick Strong, doesn't it? No matter how many times I change and delete and start again and change, Roderick Strong never comes out with these guys. They're part of the stable. Entrance is set to together. I've even adjusted the uh, the team entrance, but still Roderick Strong must have his own entrance I don't know what is wrong with this game to be honest, but hey ho first of all Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish And of course bringing up the rear on his own because he's a rebel. It's Mr. Roderick Strong And here then comes a British strong style Tyler Bate Trent Seven and of course, Pete Dunn. The awesome Pete Dunn. So, Roderick Strong's been glitched around the ring as well now. So, yeah, this is a tornado elimination tables match. So, all three members of an individual team must go through the table for the match to end. Now, five of these six people will also be involved in our 205 Live Universe mode, of course, which will be starting on this coming Saturday. Of course, that's everyone bar Trent Seven, because Trent's a little bit, a little bit hencher, should I say, a little bit over the two or five limit. We might have him around, maybe, just to um, manage the stable, maybe. That's something we could do. I've mentioned that with Jinder Mahal, haven't I? About Jinder potentially managing the Sings. Maybe we can have Trent managing British Strong Style, Big E managing uh, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston. And should the moment come where that becomes a six-man tag and the two overweight people get... Well, not overweight, but the two people over 205 level get involved, it's a possibility. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it either way. So at the moment, we seem to have Bobby Fish in the ring with uh, Roderick Strong and Tyler Bate. Uh, Pete Dunne's on the outside on his own and Kyle O'Reilly's fighting Trent Seven. So... Of course, this match has been going back and forth for quite some time now. We've seen interference and distractions from the outside by the members of the Undisputed Era. And uh, British Strong Style have come back and reformed here. Of course, this is Trent Seven's first match. Or second match. I think he might have had a singles match, hasn't he? Made his debut a few episodes ago. This is his second match in this NXT Universe mode. And of course, we will see Trent Seven, Tyler Bate and uh, Pete Dunne involved in our NXT UK Universe mode coming soon as well. Lots of information to get across for you. I'm looking forward to NXT UK. It was by far the most voted one, so uh, we'll get that underway then probably in the new year. Uh, when 205 Live comes to a close, I think I'm just grabbing my schedule now. Uh, 205 Live is going to be... Ooh, because we're obviously doing two universe modes at once now, they last a bit longer. So 205 Live looks like it's going to go till mid-January, and then we'll look at the next universe mode, which possibly... At the moment, it looks like a freeway. Oh, Pete Dunn just German suplex Roderick Strong through the table out of nowhere. Wow, what an elimination that was. Out of nowhere. I think Roddy just brought that. I was looking at my paperwork. I think Roddy just brought that table in as well. And Dunn just caught him and German suplexed him through it. That was amazing. 
Pete Dunne showing why he is an absolute favourite in not just this roster, but 205 Live as well. He is an absolute force to be reckoned with at this point in time in World of Wrestling, and I feel like he's got an incredible potential and incredible future ahead of him. So yeah, I was saying about the uh, the next universe mode after 205 Live. It looks at the moment the most votes are for Lucha Underground, uh, New Japan, or Ring of Honor. Those are the three that have the most votes at the moment. Like I say, we'll get through a, quite a lot of them by the time we um, by the time we go through until the uh, 2K20, I suppose, comes out. Um, so we'll get through a lot of the uh, the universe modes that we suggest anyway. I would like to do Evolution at some point in the all-female roster because I feel like that is going to be pretty fun, actually. There's a lot of good cause this year for female wrestlers, and I think at the moment it's it's at a bit of a high moment with the uh, the, the major... Uh, major no, no, it's not a major push, but the major fan reaction uh, Becky Lynch is getting. That could be a very good situation to go for it at some point soon, but it's not been voted for yet, so we'll go with our original, like I said, we'll go with exactly what you guys want to see. So... It's three on one in the middle of the ring at the moment. As British Strong Style have Kyle O'Reilly isolated. And O'Reilly just takes both Dunn and Bait down in one hit. But now it's two on one. If if they can get an elimination here on Trent Seven, that would definitely even out the numbers. And there it is. Trent Seven eliminated with the Exploder Suplex through the table by Kyle O'Reilly. And we are down to two on two now in this match. Wow. Okay. So we have got Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate, which will be the tag team over on 205 Live. But of course, Pete Dunne is part of that um, championship tournament still. I think, unless it's finished. I'm not quite sure how my schedule works. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, and I think Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish might end up being the tag team. Just because I want to... I'm a massive fan of Kyle O'Reilly. And I want to potentially see him pushed a little bit further on. As both members of Red Dragon throw the British Strong Style guys back into the ring. But uh, it's a nice turnaround here. There was that cutwood kick by Tyler Bate. And uh, Pete Dunn got taken down. If he was in control for a second. Tyler Bate has a chair. Oh, he got caught with a short, sharp jab by Bobby Fish. Knocking that chair out of his hands. And Fish goes under the ring, looking potentially for a little bit of wood. He can't find it. That's not that's not a good idea. The tables match. There could be another three tables yet gone through. We haven't found. We haven't got any. Where's the tables? Try the sides. Come on, guys. You can't go there, Pete. Come on, Pete. There's a screen. You can't get underneath the ring there. Be smart. Don't be like Pete, Dunn. Be smart. Pete Dunn with a headbutt. You need to go to one of the other sides of the ring, guys. With the moment they've both gone to the wrong sides of the ring, the sides that haven't got any tables under there. This discus forearm there by Kylo Ryan. Neck breaking the middle of the ring by Bobby Fish and Red Dragon now in firm control. Come on, Bobby. God, this game is so stupid. Right now, Bobby Fish is going round to the other side. He is thinking. There we go. Bobby Fish does find a table. Slides it back in the ring, and this could be bad. Bobby Fish in control of Tyler Bate. He's actually back up on his feet now, but Fish catches him with that short jab. And while Kyle O'Reilly is controlling Pete Dunn on the outside, this has given uh, the chance in the middle of the ring for get the elimination. But there's the Tyler driver. And all of a sudden, Tyler Bate's in control. But I don't think he's seen Kyle O'Reilly behind him yet. That's the one thing you've got to do in a tornado match is just keep an eye over your shoulder for your opponents as Pete Dunn now with a bitter end. On Kyle O'Reilly onto part of that broken table. All of a sudden, British Strong Style's back in control. Went for the forearm, but Pete Dunne got caught in the gut with the uh, the super kick. Now standing shooting star by Tyler Bate as well. So yeah, like I said, don't forget we've still got another couple of massive matches left for you after this one. Finn Balor takes on The Undertaker in what is going to be a great match, hopefully. And in the main event, we have got Keith Lee defending his North American Championship against Sami Zayn. Can Sami get the last laugh in this universe mode? He hasn't seen as much action as some of the other names. Because again, I think our roster might have been a bit too big. But you know, it, it does what it does. Uh, but still, 
Sami Zayn has a chance to get the last laugh and walk away with the North American Championship, which would be pretty cool, actually, if he did that. Of course, all of our champions, I know it's the final episode, but uh, all of our champions will stay champions for the next time we do NXT, which will probably be on 2020. Unless we feel like going back later on in the year. Maybe I might do another voting system and you guys might want to see NXT again. Done now, step up into Guri. That table's back to front in the corner. I don't think they're going to try and put anyone through it at this point in time. Pete done there, saving uh, Tyler Bates. And now they're taking full control of Bobby Fish as well. Fights back with the strikes. I don't think you really want to get into a striking battle with Bobby Fish and Kyler Riley, really. I think someone needs to set that table up as the Bobby Fish gets sent to the outside now as well. It seems like a long time ago that Roderick Strong was German suplex through that table, doesn't it? These guys are really creating a hatred over each other in the last few weeks. It's discus forearms there. One by Kyle O'Reilly, one by Pete Dunne. I never attempted one by Pete Dunne. He gets caught with a super kick in the gut. And uh, it looks like Kyle O'Reilly and Pete Dunne are the ones in form, in form, in firm control. As they fight through the middle of each other. That was a pretty interesting way of doing things. O'Reilly slams Dunne's face into the ring. Someone needs to get that table set up correctly and try and get this elimination because... Uh, the next elimination, I think, is going to be pivotal. It will make it two on one, which will make it very, very difficult for that person to come back. O'Reilly is at the top. Nice elbow drop to the spine of Tyler Bate. And now full control here for Red Dragon. Fish has that table. He's going to set it up in the corner. However, Kyle O'Reilly, no, Kyra does get caught. Uh, sorry, Pete Dunn does catch. Bobby Fish does catch Pete Dunne who was sneaking up behind him and there's the exploder we are down to two on one it's Red Dragon versus Tyler Bate and Bate sees the situation drops to the outside and just tries to get a few moments breather but he's being uh, trapped between oh hello Tyler Bate caught Kyle O'Reilly out but the problem is here is the numbers game is going to catch him now every time he's going to think he's in control the numbers game is just going to get him. There's a stiff right hand by Tyler Bate fighting back with everything he has. Oh, but just getting launched to the outside and dropping hard to the ground. Trying to get back up on his feet. There's just no keeping this boy down. The resilience is absolutely incredible. Fish spinning heel kick into the gut and sending Bate face first into the mat. And then a stiff left hand. It's past the injury stage now. It's just insult. It really is. This is just metaphorically rubbing salt into the wounds, but maybe they've just done a bit too much. And what's happened to Kyle O'Reilly? He's really seemed to have bugged out there. While being attacked from behind, he's bugged out completely, which is allowing Tyler Bate to get really back into this one. I wish you could rotate the screen. That'd be interesting exactly what's happening to Kyle O'Reilly. It almost looks like he's having a moment out there, but he looks like he must have bugged because he's not involved at all here. Which is interesting. I wonder if Tyler Bate could knock him out of this bug. Nice ace crusher, but this gives Tyler Bate a firm opportunity to, uh, to get this elimination on Bobby Fish and make it back to 1-1. One, one. It's also another thing we can add to the list of bugs in this game. Go on, Bate. Grab a table, man. You've got the opportunity. Grab a table before Kyle O'Reilly gets back up on his feet. Now, of course, if you are wondering where Adam Cole is, Adam Cole will be involved in our final part of this universe mode. Uh, as we said, Adam Cole has been requesting something special for Shabby Takeover. He wants to be a star attraction. So we've had a few ideas and we've contacted a few people, a few agents, and we have managed to secure Adam Cole a high profile match for shabby takeover which will happen like i said in the next video i'm not going to tell you who it is i would like it to be a surprise it's going to be absolutely incredible either way it's going to be one that everyone is going to be very excited to see as there's the knee in the face there by tyler bate but again he seems quite interested in kylo riley yet oh no he doesn't he's quite interested in the table uh, riley's still stuck in whatever perpetual bug animation he's in 
and I really feel like if Tyler Bate can get the elimination here, then he might have a major problem. Um, because we might not be able to rescue Kyle O'Reilly from this glitch, which would be very annoying because I've really enjoyed this match. And I mean, the elimination of Pete Dunn, the elimination of Roderick Strong, sorry, that German suplex by Pete Dunn was amazing. And I really don't want to uh, lose that by having to re-record it, but who knows? Tyler Bates setting up the table. As he looks like he's going to go for a deadlift German. Is he going to aim for the table? No, he can't. Obviously, he's in the wrong angle. Unfortunately here for uh, for Red Dragon and Undisputed Era because um, if they were able to be on top of things, this match would have been done and dusted by now as Tyler Bate looks like he's going to go for a vertical suplex through the table. And we are down to one on one. It's Kyle O'Reilly versus Tyler Bate, but Kyle O'Reilly is stuck. I mean, he's just been knocked and he hasn't actually come out of the animation. So hopefully a punch in the back by Tyler Bate is going to fix it. Come on, Tyler, rescue us. Get him. There we go. Tyler Bate rescues Kyle O'Reilly from whatever hell he has been stuck in there for many a moment. And now Tyler Bate looks to take advantage of the bugginess of this game to get a victory. In fairness, he probably shouldn't do. I mean, if this was two-on-one with Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly versus Tyler Bate, this match would have been done and dusted, I think, a long time ago. Because of that bug, it has given Tyler Bate the opportunity to prove what he can do. Kyle O'Reilly obviously busted open there as he got his face smashed in to the apron of the ring and... Quite simply, the apron of the ring, as said on many occasions, is steel. It's the steel framework that holds the ring together. That's why they always say the apron is the hardest part of the ring, and that, that's exactly true. It's steel framework, then in the middle of the ring, it's wooden planks that sits between the steel framework, which gives it a little bit of bounce. Um, but still, it's not a great situation to land on. And obviously, Carl has hit that steel framework pretty hard, and look at the blood now. It is absolutely draining from the body of Kyle O'Reilly who goes crashing to the outside and as I've said in the past before as well when you bleed that heavily that is liquid energy running from your body and the match is on a it's on a timer now for Kyle O'Reilly the longer this match goes the more blood he's going to lose and the more difficult it's going to be just to just to compete I mean every time we see his face it's just more and more and more it just reminds me of that old match years and about 10 years ago now, or probably longer than that, to be honest with you, between JBL and Eddie Guerrero. Eddie accidentally bladed himself too deep. It reminds me of that one. That was really, really gruesome. And this is looking like it could be along the same lines, but Tyler Bate does not care. He continues the punches and the strikes in the face, just potentially opening that cut more and more and more. And I think oh, this match needs to finish as soon as possible because this could really shorten the career of Kyle O'Reilly if it continues on much more like this it looks a pretty gruesome cut to be honest with you and of course like I said Kyle is hopefully going to be part of our 205 live universe mode he has been part of our cruiserweight classic tournament so far and Tyler Bate I think he'll know that he needs to take his opportunity as soon as he can because you never know with these undisputed era guys Butterfly suplex, but O'Reilly flicks out of it into a Northern Light suplex of his own. How is O'Reilly doing this? Look at the blood streaming from his body. How is he even fighting back? And utilizing not just not just reckless strikes to try and keep himself going, but locking in proper technical maneuvers like that. Can Kyle O'Reilly take advantage? But oh, jawbreaker. By Pete Dunn on Kyle O'Reilly. Now Dunn snap suplex. And that's the thing. Like I said, the liquid energy running from the body of O'Reilly. He gave it all he could to get back into the match. And now it's just more, more, more gruesome control by Tyler Bate. Now goes for the vertical suplex. Oh, O'Reilly manages to jump out the back. That would have been elimination, that would have been. But O'Reilly saw it coming, dropped out the back and... He really wants to prove himself here. He really wants to prove that he is the man. No matter how injured he is, he can come back and win this match. Which has been a really good match, actually. Nice and long as well. Oh, look at that snap. Saito suplex folding Tyler Bate in half. 
Bate now taking O'Reilly up into the scoop slam. And both these guys obviously scouted each other so well. Know each other's moves very, very well. Tyler Bate, Tyler Driver. And surely there's no way Kyle O'Reilly is getting back into the match after this. I might be wrong. O'Reilly slamming Bate face first into the mat. No selling the Tyler Driver completely. I love that. It's like he's bleeding heavily and for some reason just been given the... Um... Oh, Tyler's been busted open now as well. O'Reilly trying to level things up. Snap suplex. Just, I don't think he realised the table had been moved to the far side of the ring. Tyler's really bleeding heavily now as well as O'Reilly. He did just about get him with that butterfly and continues the assault anyway. An undisputed era. Kyle O'Reilly get the victory. Nice. Well done, Kyle. You have just given me so much to think about there. I mean, like I said earlier on the match, I was a massive Kyle O'Reilly fan anyway. And this has just cemented exactly why I believe that. He is the sole survivor in this six-man elimination tables match. Heavily bleeding. Really should not have survived as long as he did. But Kyle O'Reilly just proving how much of a star he is. And out come Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong to celebrate with him. What a massive win that is for the Undisputed Era. I mean, they did try and clear the blood off O'Reilly. But look how quickly it just streams back down his face and onto his body. That is insane. Either way, what a win for the Undisputed Era. And what a match for Kyle O'Reilly. Look at that. That screenshot says it all. That shows the dedication that man gives to the ring every single time he comes out. And here is our next match of the evening. It is going to be Finn Balor versus The Undertaker. And I feel like I might. Just because it's these two, I might break my no entrances rule. You know. I say it's just because it's these two. These are the two guys with the... The longest, yes, but the coolest entrances on the game. So let's allow them to shine in all their wonder. First up, we have got the man from Bray County, Ireland. A man who will be part of our 205 Live Universe mode as well. And that, of course, is Sven Balor. That's Sven Balor. He is pretty cool, isn't he? And I'm so glad I was thinking this. I was watching Raw the other week and I was just thinking... It's, it just it just hit me. I don't know why. He's been part of Raw for ages. But it just hit me like... I used to watch this guy wrestle around the UK. And now he's one of the main eventers on Raw. And I don't know why it's only just hit me. But I was like, that's really cool. And I just... I mean, I said it five years ago. And I was right. I said, I can't wait to watch Raw and SmackDown in five years' time. When the influx of people get promoted from NXT onto the main roster. And I say the same thing now. In another five years' time, can you imagine what the main roster is going to look like? I mean, we're going to have the Undisputed Era. We're going to have Adam Cole in the main event. We're going to have Finn Balor in the main event. I mean, Velveteen Dream might not be everyone's uh, cup of tea, but you cannot, you cannot look away from the fact that how good that guy has become in such a short period of time. And he has the gift of the gab. I mean, Alistair Black is just stunning as well. There's so many amazing names that are going to be on the main roster. And I just hope they translate well. I hope they settle in well. And if Finn Balor's anything to go by, then we could have an incredible Raw and SmackDown roster in five years' time. I mean, once we start to look to get rid of some of the dead wood, which again, five years five years backwards, I said about some of the dead wood, and now obviously Mark Henry's retired. The big show's only in a very bit part role, really. We've seen the likes of some of the ones we didn't really weren't that really interested in like big cast and so forth have left the company now as well and there has been a few other casualties but I feel like there's going to be a few more over the next few years to really accompany a company to really accommodate some of the fantastic names at NXT and I look forward to some of these matches I mean Alistair Black versus Finn Balor I'm looking forward to Demon Finn Balor versus Alistair Black I think is going to be a stunning match when that finally happens I feel like there are some people that suit the main roster more. I feel like EC3 is one of those people. I don't think he's the best in NXT, but I think the main roster would suit him much better. Lars Sullivan as well is the same. I think Lars Sullivan will do pretty well on the main roster. However, he might end up in the same situation as a as a Heinenreich and Snitsky. Just like this weird, like aggressive character who comes in, never really takes off and ends up just disappearing. So I do worry for Lars Sullivan. 
But the fact they put him on this game maybe insinuates that they do have plans for him. But there he is then, Finn Balor. Of course, this match came around after Finn Balor picked up a victory on NXT TV. And then straight after that match, the lights went out, just like they just have. And standing behind Finn Balor when the lights came back on was the Phenom himself, The Undertaker. The Undertaker has done really well over the last sort of 5-10 years at WrestleMania with helping put talent over. I mean, granted, his win-loss his win -loss, his win -loss ratio is, um, has suffered a little bit and I don't agree with the two people that beat him. I mean, Brock Lesnar did not need the victory over The Undertaker. Roman Reigns did not need the victory over The Undertaker. Bray Wyatt needed the victory over The Undertaker. If Bray Wyatt had beat The Undertaker, he would have been instantly elevated. And they could have skipped his character progression five years forward just by that one victory would have been so monumental. That would have been the, the metaphorical and even possibly physical handing of the torch. And that's exactly what they could... They could have done that with... with um, remember the, the match where The Undertaker looked like he retired and he left his gloves... His, uh, his, glove, uh, his gloves and his hat in the middle of the ring would have been amazing if he'd done that and Bray had taken the hat and Bray could have used the hat for years to come as part of his gimmick it could have been the literal handing down from The Undertaker to Bray Wyatt as the dark character on the roster that for me would have been a much better way of doing things than allowing Brock Lesnar because that was not needed Brock Lesnar did not need to beat The Undertaker Brock Lesnar was a big enough character already if Brock Lesnar had lost The Undertaker it wouldn't have affected him but Undertaker losing was the end of an era. And I really feel like that should have been saved to really help propel somebody forward. And the Bray Wyatt would have been the perfect man for me. And if not Bray Wyatt, I would have had the first and final loss be against Kane. And Kane could have buried him. Retirement match. Undertaker versus Kane. Buried alive. Kane buries the Undertaker. It's the end of a 20-year storyline. It would have been perfect. But evidently Vince has different ideas to me. Anyway, I've babbled enough through those two entrances. I hope that you don't mind showing... I've said I've got into the habit of cutting the entrances down because it makes the videos flow and a lot better. But this, this is a special event. This is, the, this is the shabby takeover. This is the WrestleMania of this universe mode. The shabby mania of this universe mode. And if we're going to have the two guys with the best entrances in the game, we might as well take advantage of it. This is going to be a great match. I can feel it now. This is going to be a great match. And this is a massive, massive chance for Finn Balor to prove himself against the best. The bell goes. We are underway. I feel like Undertaker's going to go for a much more strength advantage, much more aggressive striking ability. Whereas Finn's going to have to use his speed and his agility as much as he possibly can. That's exactly what he does there. Flip it out of the backdrop and then catch an Undertaker with the early early high impact manoeuvres. Now ground and take is a good idea as well. You keep the man grounded, he can't get you. And there's that strength ability there by Undertaker. Out of nowhere just launching Finn Balor over his shoulders. And like I said, there's the striking ability and then the strength once again. Look at the strength. It was a scoop slam, but he threw him. He landed a clear meter. And look at that uppercut. But Finn fighting back. I feel like both these... You'd think they're written you, really. Finn Balor, obviously, is a wrestling fan. So he's, like, unintentionally been scouting The Undertaker for, like, 20 years. I think, like, a lot of us have. Well, longer than that. He was wrestling for 30-odd years, wasn't he? I mean... I've watched him for 20. I started watching wrestling in the late 90s. I was a bit of a late, uh, a late incomer to wrestling. I started watching in the, the late 90s. And Undertaker, of course, was part of his, his main event picture then. And became my favourite wrestler instant, instantly. So Finn Balor has been yeah, unofficially scouting The Undertaker for so long. He must know The Undertaker's moveset from back to front. So Taker might have to pull out some interesting manoeuvres in this one to... Try and get the upper hand on Finn Balor. Easier said than done, we know. Take with the arm breaker on Finn and then up on his shoulders. Drops him head first across that top rope. 
Slamming Finn arm first into the mat as well and again. Wise, of course, taking those that Finn likes to utilize some technical maneuvers. So by slamming the arm, damaging the arm, it might uh, reduce the amount of pressure that Finn could put in. And now Finn going for some strikes. I don't think he wants to get into a strike for strike battle though with the Undertaker. Taker crashing to the outside. Finn follows. Referee starts his count as Finn Balor just now all DDTs the leg into the outside mat, which is going to jar the knee and going to make Undertaker's uh, ability to, to even stand and walk or even just hold the weight up of Finn Balor quite difficult. It looks like he's okay as he hits a running power slam on the outside. Of course, when you come up against a big redwood like the Undertaker, the best way to take him out is by chopping away at the trunk, I suppose. That's exactly what Finn Balor tried to do there with the, uh, the jarring of the knee, but Taker seems to have taken it okay. Doesn't seem to have affected him too much. Oh, Finn with a DDT on to the steel rampway. Back elbow, and this match is um, it's on the outside and still... No, we're not having this. We are not having this whatsoever. Right. Nope. I'm not having this whatsoever. I'm making the official announcement now. We are restarting this match. And it will be no disqualifications. No count outs. It's going to be extreme rules. So like I said, we are going to change things to extreme rules. We've had a chance to patch up the Undertaker quickly. We've managed to stem the blood flow. And we're going to restart here from scratch. Taker could not be happy. I'm pretty disappointed with Finn actually for going for that. But then again, it's part of the rules. I mean, it's not the, the nicest way to win a match. Don't get me wrong. But it is part of the rules. And uh, Finn took advantage of that situation. However, like I said, this is shabby takeover. We are not going to allow dodgy count-out victories. Who do you think we are? The WWE? No, we don't do any of that crap. We are here for the best possible match, and that's exactly what I intend to give to you. Undertaker now looking a lot more aggressive since the restart. I think um, what Finn did to him on the outside just G'd him up a bit. Finn now with the arm and sending Taker over. Showing great strength there. And now it is Finn, the first one to go underneath the ring looking for a little bit of assistance. And he has a baseball bat, but right, Taker snatches the baseball bat away from Finn and swung it. But Finn managed to catch him in the arm, so the Taker ended up dropping it. Taker with a clothesline, dropping Finn. He rolls under the bottom rope. Taker, nice stiff right hand, dropping Finn off the apron. So, of course, it's no count-outs, no disqualifications. Now, anything goes, but we've not seen any weaponry as of yet. I mean, well, obviously, Finn and Taker just tried to use it there, but it wasn't actually effective. Oh, nice. Taker just speared Finn into the apron. What I don't understand about this, right, is that there are two announce tables by the ring there. However, if you watch the entrances closely, you'll see that um, the announcers actually sat at the top of the ramp. So why on earth are there two announce tables there if the announcers are sat at the top of the ramp? I'm pretty sure there wasn't in the actual real TakeOver Philadelphia. This is the actual uh, Philadelphia uh, TakeOver Arena. I've not I've not done this. Isn't it ironic the way that this match has worked out that we're now using an Extreme Rules match at TakeOver Philly? It had to happen, didn't it? As Finn just cracks the Undertaker over the skull with a baseball bat. The Taker's just back up again, and the thing is, Taker hit Finn Balor there with a punch so hard, it seems to do more damage than the baseball bat did. Finn up on the top. This is dangerous, Finn. Think about this. Think about your safety, Finn. He does seem to be holding back. Or is he just waiting his moment? Taker back up on his feet, and Finn does drop back down. What are you doing, Finn? He just stood there while Taker slid back in. That's stupid. But a stupidity. And now I thought Taker was actually lining up for a choke slam there, but maybe decided that uh, that's the wrong way to go at this point in time. Wants to continue the assault. Stamp on the spine. Now just smashing the arm of Finn Balor into the mat as well. 
Finn fighting back. Nice uppercut. But when they got into a DDT on The Undertaker. Now you can taunt. Yeah, because your opponent's grounded. Catch him in the face of a form. Another one as well. Ducking the clothes down into a Pele kick. Undertaker flat out middle of the ring. Finn sends Taker into the corner. I think we all know what's coming here. Yep, drags him out. Lines him up looking for the shot. Gun, a drop kick. And look where the Undertaker is positioned right now. Trying to roll away from the corner, but Finn is up top looking for the coup de gras. Hits it beautifully on the Undertaker. There's the pin. One, two, and three. And the Demon pins the Phenom. Wow. Finn Balor beat the Undertaker twice tonight. Beat him by countout and then beating him there again. In this Extreme Rules match, that smash in the head by the baseball bat. I think was a real changing moment in this match. And the coup de grace by Finn Balor. And this is exactly what I was saying earlier on. Or when these people defeat The Undertaker, especially these younger lads like Finn Balor, it really can be an exceptional way to elevate them to the next level. I mean, does Finn Balor need elevating to the next level? I think maybe he could do with a little bit of a kick. He's doing fantastically well, but a win over Taker would have been massive for him. And here is our main event of the evening. Keith Lee with his first defense of the North American Championship against Sami Zayn. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. And it is for the NXT North American Championship. Introducing first, from somewhere in Canada, it is of course Mr. Sami Zayn. Big fan of Sami Zayn. He's not. I don't, I don't know it. Is he doing well on the main roster? He seems to go through little stages. He sort of, he sort of has a bit of a, a, a stage of jobbing for a little bit. Then he has a stage of having a pretty decent uh, feud. Then he goes back to jobbing for a bit. It's a bit of a weird one with Sami Zayn, but I really hope at some point we do see Sami Zayn with the same sort of push that the Becky Lynch is getting at the moment. I think Zayn could pull it off. I really feel like Zayn could be someone who could end up doing a sort of Daniel Bryan style-esque um, elevation to the main event at some point. I really want to see Sami Zayn as the main event champion at some point. I think he could be a fantastic ultimate underdog. But I think Sami Zayn definitely is an ultimate underdog when he takes on a man of the stature of Keith Lee. Coming down to the ring, wearing the North American Championship. Keith Lee is a real force to be reckoned with. And that's what it's all for then. The NXT North American Championship. It's weird this one, because I would normally say, as I've said on many occasions before, that Sami Zayn will have the pace and agility advantage and Keith Lee will have the, uh, the strength advantage. However... From watching Keith Lee, he's not exactly bad at agility and speed, is he? He's a, he's a fantastic all-rounder, Keith Lee. And I feel like he could be an absolute force to be reckoned with here for Sami Zayn. It could become very, very difficult for Zayn. And the one thing Zayn needs to make sure is he doesn't get overwhelmed too early on, because if he does, then Keith Lee could run away with this one. Lee holds his championship up high. Like I said... The winner of this one, I've just realised he's like, his torso is a different colour to the rest of his body. Uh, whoever walks away with the championship here will start next universe mode, the next NXT universe mode, as the North American champion as well. Right then. Are you ready for your main event? Are you ready? Oh, bomb. Yeah. Oh, DX. The lights are back on and we are underway and there we go, Zayn going for a a strike straight away and Keith Lee just pushes him away. That's the strength advantage I was talking about. Keith Lee just swatting him like he's a fly. Lee now boots right in the spine of Sami Zayn. And another one as well. And I said Sami Zayn needed to make sure he didn't get overwhelmed too early on. But, oh, he does come back into it now. 
But again, just the strength of Lee just tosses him across the ring. And every time Sammy tries to get back in this one. And again, look, Keith Lee just reverses him. Well, Sammy catching there with that st stiff forearm then rolls him through. And can Sammy start to mount some offense from this? I mean, I'd love to see Sami Zayn win, I must admit. I'm a fan of Sami Zayn. Have to be, didn't you? Man's a legend. Jawbreaker. Keith Lee drops. Sami continues the assault and uh, a pretty good start here. I mean, look, it's still not, I don't understand why Keith Lee's torso is a different colour to the rest of his body. Oh, it's because it's a picture, isn't it? I bet it's a picture because, um, in case you have a notice on this game, when you try and create a created wrestler, no matter what body style you pick, it's always quite muscular. I mean, even like the biggest, fattest body you can pick, you can see a bit of definition. And obviously, Keith Lee hasn't got that definition, uh, as a lot of really strong people haven't. A lot of strong people don't have definition, they just have just sheer muscle. Which is probably why they've had to get a... a, a a screen capture of his, his body. But it's just slightly not scaled him in the rest of his body colour wise. Hmm. It's a shame you can't just do like a Microsoft Paint where you just use the little pipette tool to pick up a colour. And then use that colour on the rest of the body. That would be pretty useful. As this match continues on, Sami Zayn getting some offence once again. Fighting back. Keith Lee now up against the rope. Sami Zayn springs him back. Went for the single leg drop kick and he caught Keith Lee in the face, but Lee just didn't even drop and now still Lee stays on his feet and Sammy just struggling to take the big man down. Finally just rolling through with a snapmare. But he gets caught straight away with the elbow in the face and once again Keith Lee just runs through. Sammy like a freight train. What is this? I'm genuinely confused now because I've not set anything up. So I'm genuinely confused about what's just happened. But Sammy gets a chance. I don't even know whose music that was because... Huh? I don't know what just happened there. What? <laughs> like I said, I didn't set up any mid-match interference. So I'm quite confused what, what just happened. Well, I suppose the game must set up some in in uh, mid-match interference on its own then, I suppose. But I set this match up. It was a customised match, so I don't... I don't know what's happened there. Unless that was Kevin Owens' way of trying to help his friend get the victory here. Remember, Championship's advantage is in play here, so... Um, if this is a count-out, Keith Lee will walk away with the Championship no matter what, which is why Sami Zayn does throw him straight back into the ring. He knows that more than anyone. Sami Zayn now dragging Keith Lee. There's his feet up on the ropes. Referee doesn't see it, but oh, Keith Lee just tossed him away. Lee not happy, as you can see, and Zayn drops to the outside for a bit of a breather. But Keith Lee follows him out there. But Zayn was waiting, but it doesn't matter because Keith Lee caught him up on the shoulder straight away and drops him face first. Yeah, that interference has confused me now. I mean, it wasn't uh, humon it wasn't humongously effective. Don't be wrong. As this match now sort of reverts to a striking battle. And, oh, Zayn just drives Keith Lee spine first into the apron. This has actually been a really good video so far. I, I, I know I'm being a bit big-headed there, but not from my perspective. But just the match quality the game has given us in this video has been has been high. And I, I'm, I'm enjoying it, actually. I keep worrying, though, now about more and more um, count-out victories. As Keith Lee... Knocking Sami Zayn over. We can't have this again. Not again. Come on, ref. Come on, Sami. You're up. You're up. You're up. Get back in the ring, Sami. Get back in. Oh, my God. Sami Zayn, you're a hero. Sami Zayn gets back in on a nine count. I mean, I'm not being... I'm not obviously being biased. I'm not pushing either person to win. But one thing I didn't want there was another bloody count out. We've already had one tonight's episode. We managed to work around that. But I would not accept a count out victory in an episode like this, especially a main event of a pay-per-view apart. But this has been a much more even match than I expected, to be honest. I thought Keith Lee might run away with this one, but Sami Zayn has shown some incredible resilience, and uh, 
some great heart and he might be able to pull this one off. This match once again ends up on the outside. A belly to belly slam. Lina brings Zayn back up to it. Zayn fighting back. There's the stiff right hand and then went for another right hand. Keith Lee had ducked it and put him with a super kick in the gut. Both guys slide back into the ring once again. Lee catching Zayn into the corner. And Lee just grabbing away his head there for a second. I'm not quite sure. Um... Oh, he pounces. He's hitting with a pounce. Is that going to be enough? There's the pin. One, two, and your winner. And still, North American champion, it's Keith Lee. That was a really good match again, that was. I still don't quite understand the interference, to be honest. It never really made much sense to me, that interference. I, I say I didn't set any interference up. So I've got no idea who it was. I'm assuming since it's part of the universe mode, it would have been somebody from our roster. Which is good. But still, I've got no idea who it was. I mean, the only person I can speculate would have been potentially Kevin Owens to try and give Sami Zayn some help. And it obviously didn't work. As Keith Lee, like a raging juggernaut, just flattened Sami Zayn. So there we go. That is part three of four of Shabby Takeover Complete. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's been three pretty damn good matches, actually, of course. The... Uh, Six-man elimination tables match. Undertaker versus Finn Balor. And now Keith Lee successfully retaining his North American Championship against Sami Zayn. So we've got one more part of Shabby Takeover left for you. Uh, that is going to involve uh, another six-man tag showcasing some of the guys released on the recent DLC. We're also going to see Adam Cole in his spectacle match that he uh, requested. And of course your main event of Shabby Takeover. Sami, not Sami, Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa for the NXT Championship. I've been Shabby Game Effect Metro watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.